Summary of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck George Milton and Lenny Small are travelers from Auburn, California. They go from one ranch job to the next by driving across the rough scenery of the state. They spend their last night of freedom at a pool off the Salinas River as they get closer to a job just outside of Soledad. As they cook dinner and make plans for how to get to the ranch, the men's relationship becomes clear. George is a smart, athletic man who wants to save enough money to buy farmland and take charge of his own life. He is big and dumb, and Lenny has trouble remembering things in the short term. He also loves touching soft things. Because of this habit, George and Lenny were both kicked out of weed, their last job town, after Lenny touched the soft hem of a woman's skirt to feel the fabric. Since they were kids, they've moved everywhere together. George doesn't like having Lenny around, but he knows he has to keep him with him so they can both stay alive. He tells Lenny that he should come back to this spot and hide in the bushes until George comes for him if Lenny ever gets into trouble at their new ranch. As George tells Lenny about their future, they fall asleep. He talks about the beautiful, remote farm that will have a veggie garden, an animal pen, and, best of all, a hutch full of soft rabbits for Lenny to pet. The men get to the ranch the next day. Candy, an old swamper who is missing a hand, leads them to the bunkhouse where they can sleep with the other workers. The ranch boss sees the men and agrees to let them stay, even though he's annoyed that they're late for work and doesn't trust two men who are traveling together. Candy tells George and Lenny about how things work on the ranch and warns them that the boss often gets angry and hurts crooks, the black stable hand, and that the boss is short, weak son Curly is always looking for a fight to show how strong he is. Curly's new wife has the eye, and Candy says she is always hanging out in the laborers' rooms and trying to flirt with the field hands. As planned, Curly's wife peeks into the bunkhouse, checks on Lenny and George, and then asks where Curly is. Candy then goes outside to prepare the wash tubs and take care of his old dog. Slim, a different worker who drives mules, comes into the bunkhouse and tells Curly's wife to leave. When Slim meets George and Lenny and introduces himself, he is also surprised to see two men traveling together. Carlson and Wit, two other ranch hands, come in to wash up and ask Slim about his dog's new litter toy. Slim tells Lenny that he can have one when he gets excited. Curly comes by the bunkhouse angry and looking for his wife. George tells Lenny that he's afraid of getting into trouble with Curly after Curly goes. After dinner that night, the guys have some free time. In the bunkhouse, George and Slim play cards while other workers play horseshoes outside. In the barn, Lenny is having fun with the new puppy that Slim gave him. George thanks Slim for being kind and tells him that he has been taking care of Lenny since Lenny's Aunt Clara, who used to take care of him, died. George lets out his anger about going with Lenny and even tells Slim about the problems they were having in weed. The game of horseshoes is over, and the other guys come into the bunkhouse. Carlson says that Candy's dog smells awful when he brings it inside. He tells Candy to end the dog's pain because it is blind, lame, and scaly. Carlson offers to shoot the dog with his gun, and Slim tells Candy that he will get her a new puppy from the litter. Candy reluctantly agrees after being pushed hard. As Carlson leads the dog outside, the other people hear the sound of a gunshot. Crooks walks into the bunkhouse and calls Slim to the barn to help take care of a mule with a hurt leg. Wit tells George that he wants to go to a whorehouse the next night after Slim leaves. George tells her that he wants to save money. They go back to their bunk and crawl into their beds. Curly comes by to look for his wife. He is suspicious when he sees that everyone in the bunkhouse except Slim is there, so he goes outside to find Slim. Carlson and Wit follow him because they want to fight him. Lenny asks George to talk about their farm, but George gets lost in thought as he talks out loud about their small piece of land. Candy steps in to tell them that he can help them reach their goal if they'll let him join them on the farm. He'll contribute the money he has saved since the accident that broke his hand. The other men go back to the bunkhouse. When Curly sees Lenny smiling while still thinking about the farm, Slim and Curly are in the middle of a fight. 
Curly hits Lenny, but Lenny doesn't fight back, even though Curly cuts his face. Because George told Lenny to stand up for himself, Lenny grabbed Curly's hand and crushed it. Slim tells Curly that he will get in trouble if he tries to fire Lenny and George and tells everyone that he hurt his hand in a machine. And Curly agrees. He is rushed to the hospital by the other guys. George tells Lenny that he hasn't done anything wrong. The next night, the guys are in town going to brothels and billiards rooms. Lenny plays with his pet in the barn for a while. Then he goes to see Crooks, the stable hand, in his room, which is separate from the bunkhouse and right next to the stable. Crooks says he doesn't want Lenny's company because he doesn't want any of them to come into his space, just like he can't hang out with the white ranch hands. He agrees to let the man in, though, when he sees how honest and kind Lenny is. Crooks is telling Lenny about his terrible past, which was filled with racism, discrimination, and being alone. Lenny doesn't seem to understand how important what Crooks is saying is. Lenny keeps talking and answering Crooks' questions. But when Crooks asks Lenny what he would do if George never came back from town, Lenny gets angry and confused. Crooks says he's sorry for scaring Lenny and that all he was trying to do was show Lenny how lonely he is. Lenny tells Crooks that he and George want to buy a farm. Crooks tells Lenny that every man who comes through the ranch wants their own land, but none of them ever get it. Candy knocks on the door and asks for Lenny. Crooks greets her and invites her to sit down. Candy and Lenny talk about their farm plans, but Crooks says they will never make their dream come true. Curly's wife answers the door and says she's looking for him, but she quickly changes her story to say she knows he's in town and is just looking for someone to hang out with. Crooks tells Curly's wife that she should leave because she's going to cause trouble. Lenny gets hurt, and Curly's wife tells him thanks for beating him up. Curly's wife is told to leave by Crooks. She turns against him and says she will have him killed if he talks to her again. She thanks Lenny again for roughing up Curly and then leaves the barn. Crooks tells Lenny and Candy to leave. Candy tries to comfort Crooks, who looks very upset, but Crooks says that what Curly's wife said was true, she could have him killed at any time. George walks up to the entry and sees that all the guys have come back from town. He asks Lenny to go back to the bunkhouse with him, and the two of them leave together. Candy also goes away, leaving Crooks by himself once more. The next afternoon, Lenny is by himself in the barn while the men play horseshoes outside. He is holding his dead puppy because he hid it for biting his fingers and killed it. Lenny is mad that the puppy died and is afraid that George will not let Lenny care for rabbits again if he finds out what happened. The wife of Curly walks into the barn and talks to Lenny. She tries to comfort Lenny by telling him he can get another dog after she sees the first one die. Lenny tells Curly's wife that he shouldn't be talking to her. She complains about being alone all the time and says she should have been a movie star instead. Lenny doesn't seem to understand what she's saying and keeps talking out loud about how worried he is about his rabbits. When Lenny's wife asks him why he's so interested in rabbits, he says it's because he likes to touch soft things. Lenny can touch Curly's wife's soft hair because she, too, likes the way soft things feel. Lenny starts to stroke her hair, but she screams for him to stop when his touch gets too rough. Lenny puts his hands over her mouth and nose because she is scared. He shakes her until her neck breaks when she doesn't stop screaming. Lenny knows what he's done, so he throws some hay over the body of Curly's wife and runs to the pond to wait for George. When Candy goes into the barn to look for Lenny, she finds the body of Curly's wife. He goes to get George, who is horrified by the mess Lenny has made. Candy and George quickly come up with a plan that will keep George from looking like he might be up to no good because they know that the other men will kill Lenny when they find out what he did. Candy goes outside to tell the other men what George found when he gets back to the bunkhouse. All of the guys, including Curly, are brought into the barn by Candy. Curly tells Carlson to get his gun so that they can kill Lenny. Carlson goes to the bunkhouse and comes back without his gun, saying that Lenny took it. George acts like he has never seen Curly's wife's body before when he goes into the barn. 
Even though he asks Curly to spare Lenny's life, Curly is still set on killing Lenny. Lenny sits by the pool off the Salinas, scared that he will get in trouble with George and tormented by visions of his Aunt Clara as a huge rabbit who scolds him for being stupid and mean. Through the brush, George jumps out and grabs Lenny. Lenny says he's sorry for what he did, but George says it doesn't matter and that he's not mad at all at Lenny. As George and Lenny hear the other men's voices coming, he tells Lenny to look out at the river and think about their future on the farm together. Lenny is excited to live on the fat of the lawn after hearing George talk about the animals, plants, and bunnies they'll be taking care of. Before Lenny even knows it, George pulls Carlson's gun out of the inside pocket of his jacket, points it at the back of Lenny's head, and fires, killing him quickly. When the other men get to the pool, Curly thanks George for calling Lenny. George looks very scared. Slim tries to make him feel better by telling him that he did the right thing. While Carlson and Curly are wondering aloud what may be eaten them two guys, Slim helps George, who is virtually catatonic, make his way back toward the ranch. About the author John Steinbeck, who is recognized as one of the most important authors in American literature, grew up in and around Salinas, California. When he was young he worked on nearby ranches and migrant farms during summers. This gave him ideas for some of his most famous books like Of Mice and Men, The Grapes of Wrath, and East of Eden. Steinbeck studied literature at Stanford but did not finish. In 1925, he went to New York City to try to make it as a writer. He had a hard time getting his books published, so he moved back to California with his wife in 1928. During the Great Depression, Steinbeck's parents helped them out financially by giving them money. In 1929, Steinbeck released his first book, Cup of Gold. He quickly became famous in the 1930s as a writer of both fiction and nonfiction about California's past and present challenges. Steinbeck was a controversial author who got in trouble with the CIA, the IRS, and J. Edgar Hoover because of the anti-capitalist and pro-worker views in his most famous work, The Grapes of Wrath. Steinbeck won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1962 and is now in the California Hall of Fame. His work is still praised for being realistic, empathetic, and timeless in terms of its social and political importance. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.